I was a kid growing up on the south side of Chicago, uh, growing up at a time when uh, racial change was happening very rapidly uh, in many, many neighborhoods. And uh, in that environment, I was allowed, invited, uh, to transfer from the public school system uh, into the Catholic schools, uh, the, the Catholic school of St. Carthage, uh, which itself was going through rapid racial uh, change. But I was fortunate enough also to uh, have had a wonderful pastor, Monsignor John Hayes, and uh, a great sister, Sister uh, Marie Philip Doyle, who was the principal. And the two of them, obviously without my knowing, had uh, agreed that the parish would be opening and welcoming to African-American students. Uh, not every parish had that kind of leadership, uh, nor did every school have that kind of uh, welcome. But I was fortunate, St. Carthage did, and I and my two sisters uh, were enrolled in St. Carthage uh, in 1958. I was 11 years old. You know, most 11-year-olds are filled, uh, the fortunate ones, are filled with possibilities. So on Monday, uh, you're going to be a fireman. On Tuesday, you're going to be an astronaut. And as you're going through those formative years, you're looking at possibilities. And you're looking for role models. And I was fortunate in having those role models at St. Carthage. Uh, I was not Catholic, so I didn't come from a, a Catholic background that said priests do this and sisters do that and Catholics. I was from uh, a, a single parent home with a wonderful mother and grandmother who, who always asked, demanded really, uh, that we dream big dreams. And uh, it was in that environment uh, with the uh, folks at the parish and the kind of the encouragement from home that I decided I think I ought to be a priest uh, not knowing what a priest was except those priests those are the two in other words the decision was I want to be like them fortunately uh, the uh, the two of them encouraged me uh, and in a sense, I still want to be like them when I grow up. So I'm a work in progress. I grew up in the, uh, the mid-50s. And uh, the great challenges that were going on in the United States at that time uh, involved the civil rights movement. Uh, I can remember as a young man uh, going to the wake of Emmett Till. Uh, my grandmother took me to the wake. That was a pivotal moment in the uh, civil rights movement. It's certainly, you know, just a startling moment uh, for the African-American community of Chicago because he was a, a kid from Chicago that had been murdered in Mississippi. Um, so I remember the, the sense of hope and determination that the civil rights movement uh, engendered. Uh, I also grew up in the, uh, the era of um, political assassinations. Uh, I was a junior in high school. I'll remember I was sitting in algebra, algebra class uh, when the announcement was made on the uh, public address system that John Kennedy had been shot. Um, I was a seminarian uh, in the theology program when, uh, or in the, in the uh, last years of the theology program when Dr. King was assassinated, when uh, Bobby Kennedy was assassinated, uh, the, Vietnam, the Vietnam War was going on. So there, was a lot, there were a lot of social problems that were being played out in the public arena at that time. Uh, and it, it, it shaped me, uh, as it shaped people from my generation. The lesson that I would 
would hope that would be uh, captured by the young people growing up in today's world is that you don't, don't lose heart. Uh, th those, those moments of tragedy, uh, they didn't break the spirit of the people of the time. They, they saddened us uh, deeply, but they didn't break our spirits. And I hope that's also the case of the young people in today's world, which is so divided. We're living in a world where the political divisions are just ripe. And unfortunately, uh, the divisions within our church are also, uh, you know, very much present in the public arena. My, my prayer, my hope, is that our young people don't lose hope. That they don't just throw up their hands and say, all is lost. There's no possibility of improvement, because there is. And that possibility of improvement resides with the young, uh, the young people themselves. That they, they work uh, for a better world. One of the things that I discovered, Mark, was that people are the same. Uh, they may have, they may be racially different, they may be economically different. They may come from small town rural communities or large urban communities. But there's a sameness that is really the bedrock of our humanity. We, we're looking for the same things. We're looking, uh, first of all, to be happy and to be, um, to, to encounter that which is divine within us at the invitation of the one who calls us to himself. Uh, so whatever our accent is, whether we speak with a southern uh, drawl or have a Boston accent or we speak uh, New York, uh, we are the same. And that's what's, that's what's been, in, you know, supportive of my priesthood, that you know, I'm here in Washington. I have found wonderful people, absolutely wonderful people. I'm still uh, kind of reflecting on it. Uh, it. It means, first of all, that God has been very good to me. Uh, first of all, in allowing me to be a priest and then sustaining me for 50 years uh, in serving the church as a priest. So I, I'm blessed to have been given the opportunity and blessed to have been supported, sustained, and allowed to continue uh, being the Lord's priest.